We're back with more of Games People Play, a show on which we've seen athletes and contestants who are undaunted by failure, bouncing back, trying again, sometimes through sheer dogged determination. However, an escape artist rarely gets a second chance. Tonight, we have an exception. For tonight, Bill Shirk gets a second chance. Let's go to Marineland of the Pacific and Mike Adam. To combat our sometimes humdrum, programmed, and computerized lives, all of us from time to time seek out a little adventure. It can be as simple as riding a roller coaster or as complex as parachuting from an airplane. But in the name of common sense and self-preservation, there are some fates that should be left untempted. Untempted, that is, unless you're an escape artist, like 35-year-old Bill Shirk. And William, this is the second time around for you at this particular escape. What are you gonna look for today? Well, I'm gonna look for success. I'm going to uh, escape from the handcuffs, chains, and padlocks before the rope burns in two and uh, bring me back over here to the side. And uh, if the rope does burn in two, though, I'll be going down with the chains and the padlocks and with the sharks. What Bill neglected to mention, he'll be suspended upside down from a crane, a factor that hindered an identical attempt seen here on games people play two weeks ago. Bill explained what went wrong. There I am getting out of the chains there and uh, the cuffs, of course, are trying to pull the weight of the chains. The chains weighed about uh, seven or eight pounds, which is uh, uh, a little extra weight, which is pulling down on your ankles there. And as you can see, I basically have escaped from the chains, and now I'm trying to get myself free, and I'm putting myself up on the rope, which is pretty much charred right there at the time because the wind actually kind of blew the rope out, and it only burned on the outer side, and I'm trying to release myself. And... Uh, I just ended up uh, hyperventilating and uh, with all the heat and everything and eventually just ended up completely pooped out. Once the paramedics got to you, you were taken to the hospital. Uh, how long were you in and what was wrong? Well, I had, first of all, in thinking that I was going to go uh, down in about a minute and a half, had uh, taken a lot of deep breaths and hyperventilated. And uh, also, I uh, kind of suffered uh, uh, a heat stroke along with hyperventilation, and I was in the hospital for about an hour and a half and then released. But uh, they gave me oxygen here as they were bringing me down. And I, I didn't black out. I was conscious of what was going on, but the throbbing in my head was just like, uh, just boom, boom, boom. I've never experienced anything. I've, I've been doing escapes now for many years, and I, I have never yet ever experienced anything like this where I was not successful. And instead of a killer whale, Bill will be suspended over a tank of 15 to 16 blue sharks. Shirk, 35 years old, from Indianapolis, Indiana, where he owns and operates a radio station. He and his brother Bob, his right-hand man, arrived here at Marine Land about three days early and went out into the Pacific and caught the sharks themselves. Blue sharks, not as ferocious as some species, but they have been known to attack man. That metal pan you see there is a shield. When the rope is set on fire prior to that, it is doused with kerosene. The shield prevents kerosene from dripping on Bill's head. An attending scuba diver and the security guard assisting Bill into the air below the blue sharks, just one of many. This is brother Bob setting the rope on fire. Ideally, Bill doesn't want to hang upside down any longer than a minute and a half. His brother told me that if there was a problem with the first attempt, it was that the rope didn't burn through. Had it burned through, Bill might have had a chance to get his legs undone. Good view from our underwater cameraman. He's safe and sound inside a cage. The escape is underway. Make no mistake about it, Bill Shirk is a professional. Hours and hours of practice. But he is in the business of illusion. Obviously, the better the illusion, the more excited the audience is going to be. Illusion, the code word for all escape artists. Nevertheless, it's a very dangerous profession. There are only four or five practicing escape artists in the entire United States. There are inherent dangers. Bill extricating himself from the handcuffs, now going to work on the chains around his body. Tank below, 15 blue sharks. Bill's been in the air now a minute and 30 seconds. The rope is still on fire, there it goes. 
It snaps and Bill's underwater right now. He's still got those padlock chains around his body. His job now, escape before he arouses the curiosity of the sharks. Heading for the surface, just to get a breath of air. He still has to get free. He removes the chains. Swimming for safety. And he's done it. Well, congratulations. Second time around, a little bit different result. A little different. It's amazing when you're down under that water, the feeling you have with the sharks in there. You, I looked over and I saw the shark cage, and then I saw one of the sharks. God, I'm glad I wasn't in the cage, though. I wouldn't have been able to come up. When you, when you hit the water, were you completely free, or did you have uh, some more extrication? I was lucky enough to have one hand free. And which gave me more mobility as I went down the water, but I was still cuffed with this hand. And the chains were right, right around my chest, pretty tight, padlocked in a way that was, I couldn't get it up over my arms, so I had to go back down and pull it down over the bottom of my feet. Well, Bill, after seeing what happened to you in your first escape attempt, and then watching what happened today, I am happy that you are alive and kicking, and you'll be back with us again. Congratulations. Thank you, Mike. It's been my pleasure being on Games with People Play. So that's it from here, and Bryant will be back right after this. Thank <laughs> you.